Hey guys, Scanner Danner here, trying to uh, bail my friend Pete out here on a Sebring that they just put an engine in. A ton of stop noise. Just do a quick 360 cam so everybody can see what's going on in here. There's people everywhere. We have an audience. And uh, it's a no crank. We're just trying to handle this no crank for him after they put an engine in this. So that's that's the plan. It's a 2000 Sebring. I already looked at the diagram. Uh, control side of the starter relay is fed from the TCM and is controlled by the ECM. So it looks like TCM sends power, ECM grounds it, or vice versa. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna connect the scan tool just because it's had an engine swap and see if we have any TCM or ECM related faults. All right, one of the things um, I was concerned about is a park neutral switch problem you see on the dash. It's a digital cluster display for that, and it does say that it's in park. So that's just a good guide as far as park neutral switch goes. While the scan tool is loading up, um, the starter relay should be in this box. Pete was not able to locate it. Nope. Did he give me the right ear? 2000 it should be in that box I mean I can do go right to some starter relay checks if that's where it was located but according to this it's not according to the service information I looked up before we got here it is in that box and I don't, I don't know no codes I need to know I need to know where the starter relay is no codes in the engine computer. The only code in the TCM was a battery was disconnected fault. So the scan tool is not gonna help us. I have to find this um, starter relay. I looked before and I, I was having difficulty. It's a Sebring JXI. Maybe that makes a difference, I don't know. So engine starter motor relay, it says NPDC, the power distribution center. That's where we just were under the hood. It's not there. It's a real basic system. I mean, look at it. You got your starter motor, bottom right, your relay, power distribution center, fuse number eight's a 20 amp fuse. We'll check that. Goes to the ignition switch, the control side of the relay, you can see the TCM controls the yellow orange wire and the PCM controls the tan red wire. Um, there's no faults in memory as far as the starting part goes. Um, it does say it's in park on the cluster. We can also check that on the engine computer side. See if we have some kind of switch input, Caleb. So there, when I crank this, when I hit this in the crank position, there should be a switch input signal that says we're trying to crank it. There's your shifter info. See, it says it's in park. There's neutral. Oh, that, sorry, that's reverse. Neutral. Drive. Nothing wrong with our park neutral switch, Caleb. So now what I want to know is do I have an input for my ignition? I don't see one. Maybe it's under the TCM. I'm just looking for a crank switch input. If the computer controls the relay, then there has to be an input to tell it that I'm hitting the key in the crank position. You're checking to see if it's working? I'm just looking for my input side, yep. And this would go along with our switch inputs chapter that you were just yeah. editing. I understand. That. Pull up or pull down circuit, that starter signal. I have to look back at the diagram again. I might be speaking incorrectly here. Hold on. Okay, so when I crank it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So the switch would be red wire from fuse number eight comes down, powers up the yellow orange wire, which also feeds the TCM. So the TCM, this is gonna be a pull up switch input design, Caleb. So see the fuse yeah. comes over to the ignition switch. When I turn the key and go to the start position, yeah. it sends 12 volts down the yellow wire, which feeds the relay coil. It also feeds that same 12 volts over to the TCM. That is a pull-up design switch input. 
externally sourced, yeah. internally monitored. So on my TCM, I should see, when I hit it to the crank position, I should see a yes or a high, low, or on, off. And if I do, what's that tell me about my ignition switch? Yeah, you're good. Yes, and look, sorry. And what's that tell me about my fuse out here? There you go. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Without doing the checks under the hood, just trying to work smart, not hard. And that's what I'm looking for. C2, C4. So they're they're labeling them C2 switch, C4 switch, C1 switch, C3 switch. So that might be, it doesn't say like ignition crank, which I was hoping for. I don't, and these aren't really changing. Yeah, this whole list, so that's in the run position, then that's in the crank position. I didn't see anything change. Actually came up no communication when I held it in the crank position. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm trying to work smart and maybe not uh, explain every single step. I'm gonna go check that fuse number eight just because I have some questions in this data list. Caleb, sorry. The questions I have in this data list, it says C2, C3, or C4, C1, C2. Like, I think those are the different positions of the ignition switch. Yeah. But I don't know that for sure. And so rather than spending time looking up the data pids and what they mean, I can check that fuse under the hood. Yep. Fuse number eight, which would be easier than me going through that. So I'm gonna go back under the hood and hopefully, we may come back to this, but I want to see if I can find that fuse and find this stupid starter relay. So, get a shot of this box, Caleb. I think it's this one, and it says um, ignition uh, fuel starter. So, few writings below. It's this one. That should be my. That should be this guy. Yeah, that fuse is good. Now, where's this stupid relay at? Engine starter motor relay in power distribution center, but it's not, yeah. it's not. All the service information I, I have says it's there and it's not. In power distribution center, engine starter motor relay. Uh, wait. We got another box right here. Uh -huh. Another box. There it is. So now the question is, where does it live? Front of car, cool, that's a nice picture. So it's this bottom left one is my starter relay. <laughs> AES wave, brother. You activate my favorite tool. It's a four, five pin relay, but we're only using four of them. So without doing any checks, I hit this switch it should it should crank this i have the key on so it should start i got nothing okay um the control side of the relay is this one that should light whenever i go inside and crank it how's the control side of my relay control side's good we have a load side problem and the reason we know we have a load side problem when i hit that to the on position it should crank okay so load side relay issue. So that comes from the same fuse that feeds the control side. So it's not gonna be a fuse issue. Uh, that means our problem is gonna be right down at the starter. This is gonna be hot. How did I know that? Because it's a shared feed with the control side. On the diagram, it shows it. Red wire, 
is the same red wire that feeds the ignition switch. Same fuse feeds the control side coil, red wire here. Same wire that feeds the load side and that's what I'm checking right there. And then when I switch this over to here, right, and flip the switch, that should light, which it does. That should be cranking the engine over. That goes right down. That wire is this brown wire right here, right? And that should be feeding the starter right now. It is not. Another check you can do, which checks the continuity through the starter itself, through the starter relay, the brushes, the solenoid, switch to battery positive, that should be lit. And it is. So that means we do not have a wiring problem to the starter. This is just a messed up starter. I wonder if this starter came with this engine. This would be one you'd smack on it right now. Because what that's telling me, this is with it off. I have my test light going to battery positive. I'm going into this brown wire right here with battery positive voltage. And it is finding a ground through the starter solenoid. I hear nothing. Let's go up in the air and I'm gonna shut the key off so if we do get this to crank, then I will, uh, it won't start. We'll just get it to crank. Problem's underneath. For sure, our problem is underneath. I mean, the only other variable would be that I'm not really on the starter relay and I'm checking the wrong circuit. Can't be because it lit when I cranked it. So I am on the right circuit. Nice that the starter's right here. The starter's right here in the front. Come over here. Back over my shoulder. Here's your wiring for it. All right, so wiring to the starter, that's my heavy, this is my heavy load cable, okay? And then this is my control. And uh, I didn't back probe that, let me get my tool. Okay, heavy post check. Okay. That's not a good test unless it's loaded. I'm gonna load the circuit by flipping the switch on my tool. Light stays lit. No problem with that heavy cable at all. Okay, next one. Smaller gauge wire. This is gonna prove to be good based on the test I did above, but I'm gonna check it anyway. Good, now stay there. If, as long as, can you see the light too in your shot? Flip the switch, what do we got? It's lit, right? Okay. Final check, being that this had a engine replaced, we wanna make sure that starter has a good ground before we call the starters being bad. And that's as simple as putting my test light on the housing of the starter. If this block has a bad ground, if the starter has a bad ground, the starter's gonna light. So in other words, the starter itself, the housing of the starter is going to light if that ground is bad. But I need to load it. So can you, oh, that switch is already flipped. Go ahead, switch it off. Switch it back on. This needs to start it. Needs to start. So now we beat on it. Given that we really aren't gonna ruin anything anyway, right? So I have the switch already engaged. Nothing doing on that guy. You need a starter, Pete. What's that? So I don't, what we don't know is did that starter come with this engine? You said this is the starter that came with the motor? Maybe they ruined it when they tried to crank it over to, with a bad engine. They freaking smoked it. It's a simple circuit, Pete. Pull the starter. I mean, the only, 
Yeah, I was going to say the only other thing would be is a connection of that post, but even that's good because we, Caleb, we checked that from the top to battery positive and it lit, telling you continuity was good all the way through. You need a starter, dude. I just don't know why this isn't lighting. I thought this should light. My load side LED I thought would light on this tool when it has a power and a ground. in my tool so a continuity check Caleb for the load side of this tool I just this is trying to familiarize myself I'm like what my only last question was why is that LED not lighting and it's not set up that LED is not wired unless you flip the LED light so the fact that it lights tells you the load side has a power and a ground and the ground is going through the solenoid itself the test that we showed already with the test light to battery positive saying that the solenoid wire was intact we were finding a ground through the brushes through the solenoid itself that's what that bulb does so I could have done that check too it needs a starter. Now, he says they cranked it and moved it before they put the engine in it. I don't know what happened to that starter in the process, right? It, it was removed, the engine was replaced, it was reinstalled. What happened in the process of that? I have no idea. This is a standard, needs a starter, no other issues. You know, we again, we can question the block ground, but I'm telling you that no codes, no other faults. If you have bad block rounds, you're gonna have some weird things going on with the other systems. The other thing is the test I did with the test light is a valid test for that ground. It was a loaded circuit ground to ground test and the fact that my test light did not light says there is no voltage on that ground or at least not enough to light the light and we should at least be getting a click from the solenoid which we don't have and uh, I have no problem at this point. This needs a starter, we are done. We'll get a final shot when this starter gets replaced, just of the thing cranking, so you guys can trust us, which most of you do anyway. But some new people here might not know. We'll get a shot of that for you guys after Pete puts a starter in this. We're done. All right, it's day two, we're back. And uh, Pete put a starter in this, it did fix it. Let me let you guys hear it. We're gonna crank it over. One more time. Uh, probably can get a shot right there, Caleb, and show the new starter. All right, so there's my new starter. Kind of tough to see from the top, uh, but I think you can see some newer material there. All right, starter has been replaced. So a couple things. Number one, we are back here. So we can show you guys the engine starting. Number two, Pete said that this thing's shutting off when it gets hot, and I wanna give him an idea of where to go with that. Um, that diagnosis will not be done in this video as far as the no restart goes, but while we're talking, it may die, and that's gonna shift what I'm gonna do real quick with you guys. Um, so there's two things, though, that I, I wanted to mention, talk about um, before we wrap this up. Number one is, are you confident enough in your diagnostic abilities to um, refute what everyone else is telling you? So the um, everyone else being other guys in the shop, right? What I was told was this same starter was on the old engine and that it started up and they moved it into position. So there would be no reason to think the starter went bad between engine swaps when it was the same starter. So my point is, are you confident enough in your diagnosis to say, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened in between the motor swap or engine swap, but it needs a starter. I think it's important to have that kind of confidence. Uh, number two would be the test light 
to ground test that I showed on the starter housing, ground to ground with the test light, was a legit test for the no crank, no click, no nothing. Okay, it wasn't doing anything. What that will look like with a bad block ground is that test light will light, and I made that clear. Now, I understand it's not the perfect test. A voltmeter would be better. For example, we could have two volts on a block ground that would not light my test light, and it would show you that it's good. But if you had two volts on your block ground, when you cranked it, that starter would have still clicked and we would have had other symptoms, other codes, other faults, lighting systems that weren't working right, dash lights that weren't working right, things like that. So the fact that it was a complete no crank, no click, no nothing, and that my test light did not light going ground to ground on the starter housing said a bad block ground was not our problem. I'm gonna put some clips in here right now as I'm talking. This is what one looks like on a Nissan with a bad block ground. And you can see in this image, I'm having Pete crank it. Go ahead and crank it. Hitting the key, and my test light's lighting when I'm touching on the block, on the block itself. That's what it's gonna look like. And then there's another one I wanna show you. It's on a Ford Taurus with a bad block ground. And I'm doing the same thing with a test light, cranking it over, just touching on the block. So touching the starter housing would be the same as touching on the block because they're bolted to each other, okay? That's what a bad block ground looks like. And this did not have it. So hopefully that cleared up any questions with that. And um, the final piece to this one really is gonna be done off camera, which is a uh, no restart. I think it has a faulty crank sensor. This will be saved for another video if we even film it. Uh, I guess one last comment on this one would be for you mobile diagnostic guys that are charging for stuff like this, or even for you garage owners or your do-it-yourselfers that are charging your neighbor, how do you handle something like this? You were called in for a no-crank diagnosis, you properly identified a faulty starter, and now the engine stalls and doesn't restart. It cranks, but it doesn't restart, so we're missing spark or fuel. Do you charge more? And the answer is absolutely. To be clear, I do not charge my friend Pete or my brother for that matter, anything for my diagnostics. So when I'm talking about diagnostic fees, I'm trying to teach you guys how to bill for them. I'm not trying to uh, be greedy myself because I am accused of that in the YouTube world with the armchair uh, keyboard warriors, the armchair mechanics that uh, you know, I'm overcharging for stuff and I've heard that a lot, but in a case like this, it's a separate fault, it's a separate charge. This engine now cranks, you handle the starting part, now it has a intermittent no restart where it cranks but doesn't start, again, spark or fuel problem. Totally separate problem, totally separate charge. You should not be doing free diagnostic work. It's a separate fee and that's the way you need to handle it. And that's why we're ending this video here for our no crank problem with the faulty starter. So I hope you guys learned something from that. Thank you so much for joining us. Special thanks to cameraman Caleb for being here with us too. We'll see you guys next time.